The city of Austin has found a potent neurotoxin in an algae sample from Barking Springs. So that's a part of Barton Springs where dogs swim. Earlier this month, we told you about a dog dying after swimming in that area. Now, the city says the dog likely swallowed the harmful algae. So we invited Brent Bellinger, senior environmental scientist for watershed protection. So you're working in concert really with a few different city departments with the city of Austin investigating that harmful algae. So for you, what do people and what do pet owners need to know about what you've discovered? And if people are going out in that area, what do they need to know? Yes, yeah, thanks for having me on, Jennifer. Um, we are, we're working very closely with Austin Public Health, uh, with uh, LCRA, um, just because they you know, are partners on this. They are also monitoring these situations. Uh, Austin Water, um, obviously, uh, Lady Bird Lake doesn't contribute to the drinking water supply, but you know, they like to be kept abreast of what we're seeing out here in terms of these toxic algae blooms and where they're popping up. Um, so unfortunately, we did uh, collect some samples uh, off to the side of Barking Springs. Uh, out of the main flow path that came back positive for the dihydroanatoxin A. And this is that potent neurotoxin that was identified in 2019 and has been associated with the number of dog deaths. Okay, and talk to us about mitigation efforts. What are you all doing now? Right now, uh, it is uh, the, the public outreach and education, uh, getting the word out. Um, our messaging has been since 2019 that these uh, harmful algal mats in the summer months uh, can pop up anywhere. And so people really need to be cautious uh, when they're visiting any of our waterways. Mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately, we know that this is a very popular site and it's just you know something that when people go there, uh, they, they need to be aware of their surroundings and, and how their dog's interacting with the water. Okay, and what do they need to, to look for? Because we know this is really a popular time. People are out, they wanna enjoy themselves, the dogs wanna enjoy themselves. What do they need to look for? Are there other areas that you're looking at as well? Yeah, uh, we have our routine monitoring sites, uh, three sites in Lake Austin, three sites in Lady Bird Lake. Uh, these are popular uh, parks, off-leash dog areas, and just general recreation uh, with the public besides dogs. Uh, so we have that routine monitoring and those results we routinely post on austintexas.gov backslash algae. Um, with uh, the Barking Springs and these other sites though, really it's looking for where the water's flowing. When the, if the animals go out into the flow, their chance of uh, interacting with the algae mats are very low. Again, where I collected the material was attached to the rocks. And I was out sampling today and algal material that I collected from near Auditorium Shores or at Redbud area, uh, Redbud Isle, mm -hmm. is really growing attached to submerged rocks, um, sticks, branches, and the detritus uh, that's on the bottom. So if you're seeing scums, really slimy, nasty looking material, mm -hmm. avoid that. If it's flowing, it's open, it's clear, uh, your risk is a lot lower because we have not detected the toxin in the water. Okay, okay. So if you, I know we have dog owners watching now and just people who are going out there, if you could give them one or two recommendations, what else would you tell them just to really keep people safe this summer? Yeah, you know, we, we definitely want people to still get out and enjoy the water bodies. Um, you know, for those that are fortunate to have kayaks, stand-up paddle boards, canoes, those types of things, if you're out away from shore, uh, the chances of interacting with these algal mats are much lower. Um, obviously not everybody has that. So if you're entering the waterway uh, from the shoreline, look to see if there's anything that just doesn't look right. Mm. If there's thick filaments, if there's dense mats, uh, anything that just looks kind of gross. If you, know, if you really wouldn't wade into it, you know, yeah. keep your dog out. If they swim in any waterway, you know, definitely rinse them off afterwards, monitor what they're eating or drinking out there, and just keep a close eye. And if there's any symptoms uh, for the animal, for and even for people, um, after interacting, be sure to call uh, a veterinarian or a medical provider uh, to follow up with that, because these can be very fast acting. Okay, and then lastly, what does the rest of your, your summer look like in terms of monitoring all of this? What are next steps? Yeah, uh, well, until David tells us that we have some <laughs> rain coming, um, I, I worry that it's just gonna be more of the same. Okay. Um, you know, we're looking at uh, the daily releases and the flushing of uh, Lake Austin and Lady Bird Lake. Mm -hmm. And now that we're past that um, high release period that's typical of June and July, um, I worry that you know we could really see these mats uh, increase in their biomass and their distribution mm -hmm. across our water bodies. 
So we'll keep a close eye on that and we'll continue to post updates um, as we get information. Okay, all right, Brent, thank you so much. Thank, thank you for you having for, me. For all you do, of course, we'll post those updates to our website as well.